Hey gamers, what's up? Okay, so something I definitely need to talk to you about today. Um, a Republican, Deborah Lee Hovey, she's a lawmaker from Newtown, Connecticut, has proposed Bill 5735. This new law would place a 10% syntax on video games that are rated mature based on the claim that they cause antisocial behavior. This is directly from the bill itself that the general statutes be amended to establish a sales tax on the sale of video games rated mature at a rate of 10% on the entire sales price and to require the monies derived from such sales tax to be used by the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services for the purpose of developing informational materials to educate families on the warning signs of video game addiction and antisocial behavior. So, <laughs> because we play them, even if we've never developed or displayed any signs of antisocial behavior or deterioration of mental health, we would be forced to pay an additional 10% to go to the care of those with mental illness, even though there has never in the history of psychiatric medicine been a causal link between video games and antisocial behavior. In fact, video games over the last decade have become a more social medium than ever. And let's face it, this is no coincidence. The Sandy Hook elementary shooting just happened, and of course they would love to link it to video games. So the undertone and tim timing of this new bill is really clear to me. They want to ride the coattails of a tragic event, cast blame upon their favorite scapegoat, and charge us for the crimes of those social outcasts and psychotics whose parents didn't know how to raise their children correctly or get them the help they needed when they needed it, with or without the influence of video games in their lives. Someone said that, Adam Lanza, the Sandy Hook shooter, played Call of Duty. Okay, so because he played that game, we all have an instant scapegoat? But you know what? Millions of people play that game. Where's the mass hysteria? Violent video games cause these events to happen. Shouldn't the world be under siege? Worldwide, over 246.1 million home game consoles have sold over the last eight years. And over 445.44 million since the year 2000. And that's not counting handhelds. Include them and you'll hit over 785 million game consoles, each and every one of them offering the ability to play violent video games. So I ask, why haven't there been dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of shootings perpetrated by Call of Duty fans around the world? Why? Because there is no link between the two. In America alone, in the last eight years, we've seen the sale of 122.5 million game systems. Are you telling me that because one, of the millions of people that have played a violent video game was a raging psychopath that the entire gaming community should pay for the care of every nutcase in the United States? Even though we as a community of gamers on the whole are not affected by the games they're trying to tax? Isn't it a statistical probability that some of the kids who play violent games are already psychopathic? Anything could be the catalyst for these people. I'll bet you you could also connect cell phones, pornography, cars, television, movies, music, and a myriad of other forms of stimuli to anyone who has committed a murder in the last decade. Why would we single out video games? Because they're interactive? Because they make our children commit crimes? Really? Fact. You could link playing video games to a psycho just as easily as you could to an academic achiever. Or hell, anyone under the age of 25 who breathes. So knowing that, let's draw a reasonable parallel. Would you charge an extra tax on alcohol because some people commit DUIs? No, of course not. Not everyone who drinks is a raging alcoholic. It's an insane proposition. Though some drinkers get out of control and do bad things, that doesn't mean drinking or the alcohol itself is the problem. It's the individual, and you can't condemn everyone who has ever taken a drink for the wrongdoings of those who can't take it upon themselves to act like responsible members of society. That's what's happening here. This is bigotry. The biased discrimination and generalization of an entire group of people based on the actions of less than a single percent of that group. Yes, less than one percent. The math doesn't work out. I have more numbers for you. Check this out. Since its launch in 1997, Grand Theft Auto, the most blamed video game franchise of all time, has sold well over 90 million copies of their games to gamers worldwide. That means if you could actually connect 50, yes, 50 violent crimes of Grand Theft Auto, which you can't, you would have a crime rate of 0.00005% among Grand Theft Auto owners. Let's go crazy and say you could connect 200 violent crimes of Grand Theft Auto and have a 0.0002% crime rate. Hell, let's say you connected 2 
1,000 crimes to Grand Theft Auto. You still haven't gotten to 0.1%. You would need to connect 100,000 crimes to Grand Theft Auto to make it 0.1%. Grand Theft Auto is the only M-rated game out there. These days, just about every AAA title is M-rated. There are hundreds of millions of copies of M-rated games dropping that percentage lower and lower. You couldn't possibly connect a half a percent of violent games to crimes committed by gamers. In fact, I challenge anyone watching this video to name 20 violent crimes that were proven to be caused by video games. You can't do it. And if you can't connect crime to video games, how can you connect deteriorating mental health and a lack of social graces to them? It's pure insanity. In fact, the mature video game didn't even become an issue until around 1994 with the creation of the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board. That's after games like Mortal Kombat and Doom hit the scene. That's the 16-bit era. And that's when we saw the first truly realistic depictions of blood and gore that the industry ever knew. This being the case, it's very safe to say that the most violent and horrendous crimes committed by humanity were done so before violent video games were ever scrutinized, and most before the first video games were even created, which dates back as far as 1947. Slavery? Been happening since the beginning of history. The slaughter and displacement of the Native Americans well before video games, the Russian Civil War, the Mongol Conquest, the Spanish Inquisition, the Ukrainian Genocide, the Holocaust, the Hundred Years' War. That list is as long as my arm and it keeps on going. How about killers? Some of the most notorious killers in history that operated before violent video games were ever created were Jack the Ripper, Albert Fish, the Cleveland Torso Murderer, I love that one, Amy Archer Gilligan, H.H. H. Holmes, the Boston Strangler, Son of Sam, Zodiac, uh, Ian Brady, John Wayne Gacy, Lizzie Borden, Richard Ramirez, Richard Speck, Ted Bundy, and even Jeffrey Dahmer. What violent video games did they play? None. Oh, in these militant conservative maniacs love to point at mass shootings and blame video games. The Sandy Hook school shooting, the Virginia Tech shooting, the Aurora, Colorado Batman shooting, the Camden, New Jersey shooting, the shooting in Edmond, Oklahoma, the University of Texas shooting, and yes, even the Columbine school shooting. Of these shootings committed by killers who have lashed out of society, not one was ever connected to video games. And yes, even though Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold played Doom on their PCs, the FBI said it had nothing to do with their rampage. Their conclusion, after studying all of the evidence, was that Harris was a psychopath and Klebold a depressive. Their problems were a lot bigger than video games and existed before they ever played one. They needed help that they were not given, and that has nothing to do with video games. This is always the case. I'll tell you here and now that no school shooting has ever been directly linked to video games and no causal link between video games and violent crime has ever been substantiated. So where does this insane idea of a syntax come from? The delusional minds of people who have no idea what they're talking about, that's where. Do you think Deborah Lee Hovey is a licensed psychiatrist? No. In fact, I'd be more inclined to liken her to the crazy guy on the street carrying a sign that says, the end is nigh. And this woman gets to decide that we need a syntax? Does anyone really know what that means? I mean, seriously, it's definition and what it implies. To define what a syntax really is, first we need to know what is sin. Any act regarded as such a transgression, especially a willful or deliberate violation of some religious or moral principle, a transgression of divine law. Okay, so let's break that down. What's divine law? Divine means of or pertaining to a god, addressed, appropriated, or devoted to god, or a god, religious or sacred. And what's law? Well, law is defined as the principles and regulations established in a community by some authority and applicable to its people, whether in the form of legislation or of custom and policies recognized and enforced by judicial decision. When you put it together, divine law would be defined as the principles and regulations established by God, and in this case, enforced by law. So, to sin is to break a law set by God, and a sin tax would be a tax that is applied to a product that a religious group finds offensive, but must pertain to everyone regardless of their beliefs or religion. We're talking about laws based on religion in a country founded on freedom from religious persecution and the separation of church and state. This is the subjugation of people based on their beliefs and entertainment preferences. This is extortion, the obtaining of money or some other thing of value by the abuse of one's office or authority. This is the ultra-conservative religious nut telling you that you have to pay a sales tax on something they consider offensive, a special sales tax for sin. 
I'm sorry, please forgive me for using the word Nazi-esque, but it really fits the bill here. Think about it. Let's say these people get their way and a syntax is instituted. What's next? If this were to happen, then doesn't this open the floodgates for the taxing of everything the church has ever deemed sinful? I mean, seriously, if video games are sinful, what about movies? Uh, 2000 Maniacs, I Spit on Your Grave, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Kill Bill, Rambo, Saving Private Ryan, where's the line drawn? All these movies feature murder and atrocities committed by humans upon other humans. Will there be a syntax for those two? Surely they're just as harmful as video games. And what about literature? How about violent and sin-filled books? Are they responsible for all the problems with our society? What about classical literature? There are a ton of books that have been deemed sinful over the years, banned and burned. Should this tax apply to them too? Justine by the Marquis de Sade? Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger, The Grapes of Wrath, John Steinbeck, Lolita, Vladimir Nabokov, Lady Chatterley's Lover, D.H. Lawrence. That list goes on and on too. Even the works of Mark Twain and Shakespeare's writings were filled with what this woman would consider sin. Fifty Shades of Grey. I'll bet she read it. Where's the line drawn? Fine, let's do it. Let's tax everything these morons consider sinful. While we're at it, I say we charge a sin tax on the Holy Bible itself. This book is filled with sin, incest, murder, the subjugation of women, genocide, religious intolerance, and even slavery. How about this? Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 through 21. If any man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him, he will not even listen to them. Then this father and mother shall seize him and bring him out to the elders of his city at the gateway of his hometown. And they shall say to the elders of the city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And the men of this city shall stone him to death. So you shall remove the evil from your midst. And all Israel shall hear of it and fear. Should we not charge a syntax on any work that tells us to stone our children to death because they won't listen? Of course not. What? What do you mean the Bible doesn't count? But wait, no work of art can be condemned and held accountable for the ills of society if we're not willing to do the same for all works of art across the board. No double standards, no exceptions for all literature, paintings, movies, music, television shows, and yes, even video games. But they won't recognize that. In fact, they'll tell you the things they like are okay and the things that we like are not. No matter what you think, not to worry, they'll tell you what to believe. And now that they've decided to base our laws on religion, now that they can arbitrarily choose what is and is not sinful by law, now that the separation of church and state has been lifted, who dictates which form of arts are, are subject to syntax and which ones are not? Who do we let decide this matter? God help us all because you can go real crazy and tax a whole lot of everyday activities that you and I wouldn't think twice about doing, but some holy roller would condemn us to hell for taking place in. And frighteningly enough, some of those people, Deborah Lee Hovey, for example, are in politics. They're the ones who make these choices. More examples. Yes, the body is a temple. So if I get a tattoo that this lady doesn't like, do I pay a sin tax when I get it done? Will there be a sin tax for unwed mothers? Hell, they can charge them continuously every month until the mother gets married and then baptize her for good measure. A sin tax for eating too much, yes. A sin tax if you take an extra trip through the buffet line or order a bottomless bucket of popcorn at the movies. What's that you say? You want to enjoy an all-you-can-eat dinner at your favorite restaurant? Sin tax because you are a glutton. If I rent a house or an apartment, will the landlord be able to someday walk through and tell me that I have to pay an extra 10% on top of my rent because I didn't pick up my bedroom to his satisfaction or do my dishes that afternoon? Will I, will I pay a tax for lust, envy, and wrath as well? Is there a sin tax for pride? I say that Deborah Lee Hovey needs to pay hers for having the audacity to think she gets to choose what is and is not sinful and then applying it to everyone regardless of their religious or social views and beliefs. Tell me something, do I get a tax break at the end of the year if I don't commit a crime? I'm paying a tax for buying material that she says glorifies violence and makes me antisocial, but if in the end this game has no negative effects on my psyche, if I don't go on a rampage and I'm a law-abiding citizen contributing positively to society as a whole, do I get to submit my receipts when tax time comes around and get my sin tax right off of virtue? You know what? How about a tax for using the Lord's name in vain? Yes, let me contribute to the care of the mentally unwell with this statement. God. Damn, this woman is stupid. Not to mention presumptuous, arrogant, ignorant, and nutty as a freaking fruitcake. In fact, I think part of that tax should be used to take care of her mental well-being. 
So to you, Deborah Lee, I offer this. Let me help you brush up on another important part of the Bible, a reoccurring theme. You see, pride is one of those deadly sins, and I'm not saying I know more than you do about the Bible. God knows I'm not that arrogant, but I do know the Bible says this much in terms of arrogance. Proverbs 16.5, anyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. Ooh, pride, Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Whoa, vanity, Job 35, 13. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Now you tell me, Deborah Lee, when do you plan to pay your sin tax or does it not apply to you? That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And here's the funny part. All this talk in America going on about violent video games, antisocial behavior, mental well-being, etc. Meanwhile, we have mass genocide being committed in South Africa. The Republic of the Congo sees more than a thousand rapes per day. And Caracas, Venezuela is the murder capital of the world. And you know what? I don't think they play a lot of video games in those places. You want to talk Bible, Deborah Lee? Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye, you hypocrite? First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Or if you want to keep it short and sweet, James 4.12. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Did you forget about those, you close-minded Bible thumper? Did you think that there wouldn't be at least one person out here who would see your hypocrisy? Did you think that no one would notice that this is without question the ultimate display of pompicity? Oh, and for the record, antisocial behavior is not a sin, you freaking maniac. 84.99 That there an expensive coat. Starcraft. Hey, hey, you know what my favorite game is? What's your favorite game? Metal Gear Solid 1. Because Metal Gear Solid 1 was just totally awesome. Now, my second favorite would be Metal Gear Solid 4. Why? I can't tell you why. <laughs>